know, but it's handicapped now. Is there sign there? Yes, there's two signs. Two oh, handicapped signs. Yeah. And you're on the grass. No. The leaves are in the boat. I'm oh, the okay. <laughs> Not really well. <clears throat> Four. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
No action. Uh, they're still over there. So. But no, they shouldn't be over there. Okay. <laughs> what time was exactly six thirty? Uh, six forty five. <laughs> six forty seven. How many on the the hippie crazy so how the old people do this. Oh, one day to go. Just to be cool events that are into that porch festival. Yeah, right. That was awesome. Wasn't it? It's so cool. That looks new. I'm like, watch. Wow, is Reggie yeah. Zoom? That was super yeah. cool. That's that's good. Good. It's called a rental at stock. They're species. Huh? <laughs> I have another thing that rented at stock. Yeah. Really? Oh, Michelle. Third, a quarter to a third. Did you rent really a bottle ball? Or did you need their. Oh. Lost all three? Oh. It's not four. Sorry. No way. I can't get you on. Oh, yeah. So is there a thing called rental at stock? We had something to change to. We had a couple of people that called and said, yeah. Are you going to be open to take water bills really on expensive. Monday? And he said, Of course. Yeah. And that they said, Because we want to wait to see what your outfits are going to be. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to go off. Well, we've been doing it for 18 years. Yeah, one of the yeah. Uh, she I mean, does smile. The greatest place on earth. I know. I know. Happy, happy. No. Oh, no. It cannot be. No. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe it's well, happened yeah. to that yeah. or whatever the character is going to be. Okay. Channel, channel mini. Okay. Okay. Channel mini. Okay. Channel mini. Channel mini. Channel mini. Channel mini. Channel mini. Channel mini. I don't think it was the future because I think a lot of black lands are going to be built in the air. No, no, no. You're fine. 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 You're fine.
Oh, now let you. I don't know. Oh, did something happen? No, yeah, you just lost Rodney. Lost who? Rodney. That's okay. Lion? Do that. Oh, shit! <laughs> 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 Yeah, Laura, I mean, so, it could have been actually, yeah. you know, but not intentionally, but things yeah. do happen. Okay. Yeah. I am going to skip the first um, resolution because I know we have some things to talk about and just get the other resolutions out of the way. We resolved to hire Chris Bonesteel, part time laborer for maintenance department, a rate of 20 85 per hour, effective October 28, 2022. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, whereas the Woodstock Town Board believes that ha housing is a human right and that working towards housing solutions is a priority for the well being of the local residents, the, the economy, and the community's <coughs> sustainability. And whereas the Town Board, I hate to say this, I think I need reading glasses. You want more No. You want me to read No. Whereas the Town Board believes that rising housing and rental costs and a lack of diverse housing opportunities, including quality affordable rental housing, as well as opportunities for community members to own their homes, pose significant challenges to all members of our community and threaten our community character. And whereas according to the Ulster County Housing Action Plan based on the census data, 22% town of Woodstock homes are renter occupied, and whereas affordable housing is defined as housing in which the occupants pay no more than 30% of monthly or annual income for housing costs, including utilities. And whereas 68% of Woodstock renters and 34% of owners live in unaffordable housing, paying more than 30% of income, with 21 to 25% in, in the category of severely cost burdened housing costs of more than 50% income. And whereas ensuring that there are affordable housing options for all community members is a critical component of creating a healthy, sustainable, and prosperous community to which local elected officials are committed. And whereas the rising housing and rental costs and the lack of diverse housing opportunities for all community members is in part due to the demand of housing far exceeding the supply of new affordable and workforce housing being developed in the community. And whereas the town of Woodstock has made housing a priority through several initiatives in recognition of the housing crisis, one creation and passage of the 2018 comprehensive plan, which identified the town's housing needs and the goal of providing housing options. Two, appointment of the Woodstock Housing Committee in 2019, whose work identified two crucial areas of focus, zoning revision, the Housing Oversight Task Force, a home share program, and a housing trust, Woodstock Housing Alliance, which have been realized in 2022. And three, development of housing committee of an education and outreach effort to raise awareness of housing needs through newsletters, social media efforts, and presence at in-person events. Whereas a long-term commitment by the local government to review and approve new affordable and workforce housing projects is critical strategy to ensuring for ensuring there are affordable housing options for all community members. Whereas the town board has an opportunity to actively address housing challenges and ensure that our essential workers and other community members can continue to live in the community they call home by, by committing to join the Ulster County Housing Smart Communities Initiative, Housing Smart Communities, and thereby receive a wide range of supportive resources. Therefore, be it resolved that the town of Woodstock, in order to meet local housing needs, stops the following <coughs> commitments as part of joining the Ulster County Housing Smart Communities Initiative. The commitments to the program include the timely completion of the following six steps. One, join the Housing Smart Communities Program and engage the community. Two, designate a Housing Smart Community Coordinator to serve as liaison between the municipalities and the Housing Smart Communities Program staff. <coughs> Three, form a Housing Task Force or designate an existing official housing related body of the town to serve as the group committed to Housing Smart Communities Program. Four, register the program with the Housing Smart Community website. Five, establish a community outreach and education campaign on the importance of de developing a range of housing options. And six, commit to implementing action in the Housing Smart Communities Program. Second. Any questions, comments, critiques? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes five zip. We resolve the schedule. <laughs> Here's the 
Speakers on to schedule a public hearing on the proposed amendments to Chapter 260, Zone, zone Law, Town of Woodstock, New York, and in a section to regulate the town's well fields. For November 22nd, 2022, at 7.05 p.m., the town office is 45 Palmer Drive, Woodstock, New York, and via Zoom, be further resolved to authorize the town clerk to publish in the town's official newspaper the following notice. The town Woodstock Town Board at a meeting held on November 1st, 2022, scheduled a public <coughs> hearing. For November 22nd, 2022, at 7.05 p.m. at the town office is 45 Comar Drive, Woodstock, New York, to hear comments on the proposed amendment to Chapter 260 Zoning Law, Town of Woodstock, New York, adding a section to regulate the town's well field. Second. All in favor. Uh, uh, All right. And this is on the website. I know Bill, you said that you put the documents the on the website for the public to documents are all up on the down. website, yeah. For, uh, a bit resolved to schedule a public hearing for the proposed amendment to Chapter 260 Zoning Law, Town of Woodstock, New York, amending sections of the law for regulating cell towers for November 22, 2022 at 7.20 p.m. <coughs> town Office 45 Palma Drive, Woodstock, New York, and via Zoom. And to be a further resolve to authorize the town clerk to publish in the town's official newspaper the following notice. The Woodstock Town Board at a meeting held on November 1st, 2022, scheduled a public hearing for November 22, 2022 at 7.20 p.m. Town Office is 45 Como Drive, Woodstock, New York, and via Zoom to your comment on the proposed amendment to Chapter 260 Zoning Law, <coughs> Town of Woodstock, New York, amending sections of the Zoning Law regulating cell towers. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. First, the town held a public hearing on October 18th, 2022, on the proposed local law number four of the year 2022, amendments to the town ethics law, and whereas the public was given an opportunity to or for opinions on that matter. Therefore, I got to add something here. Therefore, be it resolved to close the public hearing, be it further resolved to adopt local law number four, as a typo, amendments to the ethics law, be it further resolved, this local law should take effect immediately upon filing with the Secretary of State. Second for the purposes of discussion. Discuss. I, I really continue to be concerned about the, the section that, uh, that allows um, person or group, town board or supervisor, appointing a an ad hoc force to um, to allow it not to to allow it to evade the uh, the the ethics law. Um, and my my question to um, to the chair when he presented it was. Um, what his thoughts were, and he said that that was up to the board to. Um, uh, um, so I mean, I I would certainly be interested in in amending it uh, to allow that that there is not a a single person or a single and then exclude the members at the same time from the the ethics laws. I was I was hoping that others would be interested in joining me in in uh, supporting that kind of amendment. Okay, so just to correct you, Bennett, because you do misspeak, the that section does not exclude the the those individuals from evading or not uh, being bound by the ethics law. It simply uh, doesn't uh, require them to fill out an ethics form. They are still bound, and it's very clear, still bound by the ethics law. And the whole genesis of this is, is if the, we create, particularly the supervisor who can create a, a short-term task force, you know, every time I appoint, uh, say a task force for three or four months to do something, by the time we get all the ethics forms in, that, that task could be done and that board could be disbanded. So it would be up to the call of the, the body of point, making the appointments, be it the supervisor or the town board, to exclude that particular board from filling out the ethics form. Absolutely not uh, uh, excluding them from following the ethics law. Um, and, and it's a decision, if, if I may say, because there are a lot of, we had, uh, when a task force is created or a short term uh, you know, team is created, oftentimes it's advisory to the town board. So the criticality of having the ethics form filled out is very critical for a body like the planning board or the uh, you know the ZBA because they are independently making decisions that affect residents of Woodstock, and you know we don't oversee what they do. They are independent, 
And so it's important that they fill out their non-disclosure. When there's a group who's, who provides, and even the Housing Oversight Task Force, for instance, the, you know, H, yeah. HOTF task, you know, task Force is recommending a law to the town board, but they're not making a final decision on it. The town board has a final decision. So a lot of these task forces don't have a final decision on things. They are advisory. So in my view, the reason for the, for the ethics form is different from somebody who is independently making decisions with no oversight from the town board versus those who are advising the town board. That, that's my opinion. Really? Are you suggesting just to change the verbiage so that it's reflected or that it's the town board? No. Uh, I'm, I'm suggesting that the verbiage be changed so that if the town board is appointing it, the town excluding uh, uh, the person from filling out the ethics form, or that if the supervisor is the one who's appointing, that the supervisor is not the person who is um, excluding the person from filling out the form. That's that's what my concern is. My who, concern who is exclude them? that the person who who appoints should not be the person who <coughs> excludes. So if the supervisor appoints, then the town board could vote to exclude. If the town board appoints the person, then the supervisor could move to exclude. I don't think that the person who is appointing, and quite frankly, it seems to me that that's a really good tightening of this law. It's not about the timing. It's about having the decision made as to whether the person who appoints is also the person who can exclude. Reggie, any thoughts? And do you have anything? I mean, that language is that written anywhere? Is just in that test? No. no, I wanted to have this discussion. We recommend a change in the in the language. So we could we're, again. I'm, we're not going to vote on the change tonight. If we're going to change this. We're going to table it. But I would move to table this so that we can. Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. Do we want to table? I'm 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 ready to vote, but. Whatever you guys want to do. So I'm a nay. Two eight eyes. What are you gonna do? Well, I was hoping to bring up the ethics law. I was trying to finally, I was trying to trying to quickly bring it up and just see if it any made any sense. It, you know, it, see if I agreed. You see where? So Ben, do you know where exactly you would have put? Would you like me to read? Sure. The, wait, 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 what is the section? Can you tell me the section where? Do you know what? Do you know what section Ben is referring to? Um, well, let me see. Uh, so, 71-7D. <coughs> uh, I think that's the one. So, I'm, I'm sorry, 71-7. No, it's um, right above. Okay. So, it's on this. Well, well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm reading it now. Thank you. Yeah, you did. Yeah, this is this is it right there. So, so the members of all of the board's committees task force appointed by or with approval of the town board or supervisor must also complete disclosure forms except unless explicitly exempted from doing so in writing at the time the entity is established or by subsequent action by the appointing authority. If the ethics board felt like it was inappropriate that someone like did that form be waived, they would uh, start a any, process. Anybody could uh, challenge to the to challenge board. right the um, waiving of the right. and if there was somebody that was appointed that somebody had issue with it, mm -hmm. it, it could go to the ethics board. So I, I get my opinion and we can we can table when discussing from that but if i were to if i were to carry on and follow on to what you're saying i might say that the um you know you must do the form unless explicitly, explicitly exempted from doing so in writing at the time the entity is established i think the town board as a board can do it if the town board appoints i'm okay with the town board saying you don't have to do the form i would think the check and balance might be if the town board is the one that always if 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 a, if a disclosure form is not going to be needed to have the town board as a board say it, I would be okay as that. I, I'm not I'm not worried if the town board appoints the town board also does the uh, exclusion. 
I'm okay with that because we have a five member board mm -hmm. and I think things get well discussed here. So, so if we were to amend this, I would just say that anybody, <clears throat> if approval of not doing the form is done, the approval would always be a town board thing. I, I would be okay with that. I think that would help. It might not be exactly what you said, uh, but I think it would it'd be more governance than having one person do it. It would be the five members. I would board. agree with that. Mm -hmm. So we should table for tonight. Do, do you want to table and rework it? Yeah. Come back? So you'll say table. Yeah. Four, four, one, yeah. Jackie. Well, at the next meeting, um, we'll have the your guess is ours. Well, I'm, it, it, right, right now, we're, done. we're going to move on, Iris. We can talk about it tomorrow. <clears throat> Last. So, Bennett, I'll let you start this conversation. Uh, you sent us out uh, some thoughts late today about uh, the budget. So this is the first year I read the resolution and we can we open it for discussion, second for discussion? Um, or not do the resolution yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna hold off on the resolution okay. and let's just let Bennett explain what he sent us. So um, I think that the time Woodstock's budget should reflect our community and its priorities. And I think that the budget should be clear. And I think that it should show that we care about protecting the environment. And I'm proposing a set of amendments to the budget to do just that, to make clear that our community and the CAD skills need to be nurtured. These amendments provide funding for the Environmental Commission to pursue its zero waste solutions for the tree committee to replant and care for trees along the roadway. Um, there's funding for the planning board to continue its work with sustainable development that has the force of legal counsel behind it. I think the budget should also show who we care about. And these amendments do that. And I'm talking about the many seniors who call Woodstock their only home. There is funding to increase our senior rec programs, to expand and to raise the pay for the senior rec teachers who care so deeply about these seniors. Many of these teachers have worked over a decade without a pay raise. And many of them worked through the pandemic, leading their senior exercise classes, but received no ARP pandemic funding for their work. This budget changes that. <clears throat> and finally, these budget amendments that I'm proposing recognize the work of the volunteers who serve on the boards and the commissions and the committees. Funding for committees like the Kamala Stewardship Committee, the Complete Streets Committee, will enable them to do more to learn more and to improve the quality of life in Woodstock from the sidewalks to the trails and eventually, I hope, to bike paths. Funding for the Housing Committee and the Human Rights Commission will also help move these goals of equity and inclusion into action here in Woodstock. These amendments won't fix everything, but they will keep the budget under the cap and reduce some of the unnecessary padding that I believe needs to stop. We need more transparency in our town's budget, and I believe that these amendments are a first good step. And I look forward to discussing these amendments to the town budget and voting yes on them. And I have a piece of what I've provided to everybody. Yeah, I, I have a one. Rachel, do you want to come? Yeah. Jack, you just like oh, to Anyway, and uh, if others would like copies, then they can have copies here. One for you, Nick. I don't think you, Bill, do you want? Look. I can. Uh, I can. I can. Okay, that's great. You sent it over. Of course, he did. Okay. Uh, to make it you know what? You can have. And for, and for everybody else, if you would like, there's a copy of just the front page if you want it. So why don't we go through this page by page, Bennett, and I'm going to start um, with the town board budget line. Can I just ask one question? Bennett said that in order for this to move forward, you wanted to stop padding the bu budget. Where where did you find that the budget was being padded? Well, that's an excellent question. Um, for instance, the uh, the town 
budget line um, on uh, full-time regulars. The, um, the full-time regular um, 2022 supervisors worksheet budget in the first column uh, is 67,126. Um, now that does actually not reflect what the salary of those two um, court clerks make plus their workers comp or plus their um, their overtime. Um, what line are you looking at? I'm looking at uh, town court budget line right here, right there. That one right there. Which page you? Sixty-seven thousand dollars. Which page? Which page you on? It is on town court. Three. It's on town court budget. So line. I would like to make a comment, if if I may. Um, I, overall, I took a peek at this earlier, and um, I, I guess not happy is to sum up how I felt because it looked like you had taken these salary increases proposed in the budget and flattened them so that people would get the same salary next year that they've gotten this year. That's exactly and, 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 and it's an age of inflation, and we have always struggled to do the best we can. I, well, I speak for myself. I would. I believe we should do the best we can for our employees. Our employees have served us beautifully, wonderfully, and I. Uh, to, to level set, the five of us are the management team of all the employees, whether they're volunteers, whether they're employees. We are the management team, and it upsets me. I, I've been a manager. People have heard me say this a thousand mm -hmm. times over thirty years in my day job. I have always done the best I could for my employees, and it is upsetting to me to see a budget that does not allow me to do the best for my employees. They're your employees, they're my employees. I'm dismayed actually that you want to punish the employees and some, not give some them employees. some employees and, and not and not Just give them clear. and not give them what I believe they deserve. I know I'm one vote, you're one vote, we don't always agree. Um, my position is I find it upsetting to not do the best we can for our employees who give so much to us and do such a great job. Laura, what about all the volunteers who have given like blood, sweat, and tears for many years? What about even the, the teachers, the senior rec? I mean, they haven't had a raise in what 15 years? Well, when the I was a volunteer, $58 now, and you're not paying for the insurance. Yeah, when I was a volunteer, that's four, quite a raise. Four, when four, I, four more, when I was a volunteer, when I was a volunteer, I knew I was a volunteer. I believe we should put some money in the budget because each of our volunteer boards did come and say, you know, if we had some money, we could do this. We had some money, we could do that. I believe that we should be taking, finding some money in the budget so that we can, and in my, you might, we haven't all discussed this yet, but I mean, I think a, a lump of money that instead of trying to be detailed by, by volunteer board, have a lump of money that can be used as, as boards need it. Um, so I think that we should give some money to the boards to use. Not all that was asked for, what was asked for was a huge number, but I think that for the first year that we give money, the boards have never had it. I think starting out with a more modest amount, but I think to expect our employees to take no, some, some employees to have no increase in salary, um, I am not for that at all. Which employees, um, if, you, if you don't mind my asking. Which ones did you? Take their, yeah. their the supervisor's from. office, the town clerk's office, the courts. The courts actually submitted these um, these numbers. The courts us. are going to hit. We all years. submitted. And we all submitted no no, no. raise in the point once. We all submitted. So supervisor McKenna. The courts the are going to hit. The town board. Board. Let me, let me talk. Yeah. Sorry. Jack is at the table. She's she's, she's not Sorry. a member of the town board. She is she is she can she is here and she will address the, the, the supervisor can say who can talk. The supervisor is running the meeting. The the courts are on target to hit about sixty five thousand dollars. That's true. That's in, in that yeah. line. So and I, that's if there's no overtime between now and the end of the year. So so I, your sixty three thousand dollars is less than what we're going to spend this year and doesn't include their negotiated raise, which you were part of. The negotiated raise is in this $63,000, oh, and this is the it's number it's that they submitted. It's a kind of hours. I'm sorry, Mr. Vice President, had you been at the meeting that, that was at the town courts, had you been there to see the documents that they handed 
to me and to Maria Lanagonji, you would, you're telling me yes, that these are their numbers. I'm telling you that their point ones are not correct. As a matter of fact, they took their actual pay stubs from last I'm year. I'm telling you that they're going to hit 65,000. Listen, I've been doing this for 20 years, then. Take my word or don't. I don't, you know. I, I think that. I'm telling you, they're going to hit. I think that these numbers are. So you didn't give the judges a, a raise either. That's correct. That's right. So, so, let's, so let's go on then. Let's see. The supervisor. So the supervisor, you're not giving any of my staff any raises. That's correct. You are eliminating the part-time person that I recommended. And you actually thought it was a great idea to come in and, and do the cemetery. So I can tell you that next year I'm done with the cemetery. If there is nobody to replace, then you guys can go sell graves and arrange the digging. And that's fine if you, if you want to do that. Um, you zeroed out the computer, or not zeroed out, you removed $12,000 from the computer line. I can tell you that that's the estimate from the computer company. If you recall, we agreed to go with new emails, which is going to be more costly. We have additional equipment that we now have to ensure. And we're going to hit closer to 55 than the 43, which will be far too low. You want to lower it? That's fine, but it's going to miss the budget. It would be nice if, if let me finish. The, um, the other one here, so the accounting that I raised up to 8,448 uh, and you lowered it back down. We have the proposed quote for next year, which is $8,448. So you'll be short there too. And the audit service, we've also talked to them, that's for the uh, AUD, and that was gonna be 5,000. You see Supervisor McKenna, your budget is completely not transparent. Have you have you any idea? Oh, you, you, you didn't go to the budget hearing. You you uh, ran out of one of them and closed it after 20 minutes. You refused to go uh, talk to the to the, the justices. Supervisor, I, have, I actually question. have talked to the justices. I've talked to Shooter several times. For the assessor, you removed you the part-time person, which was going to be helpful for the rebound. You know, so we're not going to go able... through this so we can find out exactly where you cut the budget. I, so agree. That all... I completely yeah. agree. With yeah, I, because it's I disgusting. So go ahead, Bill. Please continue. <laughs> yes. So uh, in the postage line, you, you reduce that $7,000. So you reduce the uh, contractual um, it's three thousand. We've only spent thirty dollars, but we just actually spent twenty two, twenty five hundred dollars out of that buying the parking tickets for next year. And as I explained, and as Pam explained during uh, one of the budget hearings, a lot of these items don't get spent until the last minute. So you're looking at thirty dollars and saying, "Oh, we're not going to use it." We're actually going to be very close to the three thousand dollars. Okay. As if far as as far as the as. as uh what Come on, Bennett, yes, stop it. You know, you're like Donald Trump. I told you this the last time. You keep, <laughs> you keep saying things, but like repeating them. I am like Donald Trump. Trump. Yes. That's hilarious. <laughs> so you, you, um, you took from $14,000 for the Sorry. postage machine and you put that down to five. I can tell you that at, in December, we're going to make a purchase of probably close to $5,000, which is going to bring us at least to thirteen five in that line. That is what we do every well, year. Well, that'll, that'll, that'll be for this year, not for next. Uh, but we spend the same next year, Ben. Not if we don't budget that. Uh, well, then we don't uh, send out mail. All right, we won't send out mail, and people won't get notices, and won't get their tax bill. But if you haven't even been, been here a, a year, and you're already an expert. No, I mean, learn the process. He's been and here 20 years, and, and, and he are, is very and much are, an expert. You have padded this budget with, with, with so many lines that you're able to then take it all and put it into your capital funds and your capital projects. Ben, you are able to. I, will tell, I, I don't disagree that the last two years we've been very fortunate because we've been, been in the middle of a pandemic and we've reduced courses greatly. And God bless the town employees who have done that. And we were fortunate to see our revenues come in. So the last two years have been really good. But I can tell you that that's not going to last. And why don't you go talk to March Gallagher, who you hold up on a pedestal, as do I, actually, and ask her. Because she'll tell you the same thing. 
Don't waste your money. Don't waste your savings on frivolous things. Spend it on capital. I'm saying don't You've waste your money, period. And 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 let's cut this budget. There has been no We're waste of money. The budget. You're moving it from one line to another. Oh no, it, it cuts the budget. You should you should look. There's over 137, 107 thousand dollars. Did you cut your budget, Bennett? He did. He did. Cut Took his, his raise, he, but did you no, cut no, your budget? He, he no, he didn't cut the, uh, the, uh, the town, town board. board. Oh, they you guys are all getting a cut. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah, so you don't so need to get your raise. Content. You get cut. Besides, it's well, not how beautiful. You don't get the raise. Oh, you don't get the raise. That's beautiful. It's best beautiful. And I know how many hours I put in this. I am so sorry. Oh, by the way, I know. I know the hours I've worked for the town board this year. So I know the hours. Or I, 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 and Reggie and Bill. This is the most spiteful thing I've seen. I have to apologize. You're thing. you're picking yes. on a handful of employees. I'm not. No, I'm. Oh, oh yeah, you I'm have. Telling, yes, you, I'm te you know, when I was a kid, we used to have this thing where when we invited Were you a somebody kid? over, Ever? when we invited somebody over to have dinner with us, we would say family hold back. And you know what that meant? That meant that the guests would eat first. The guests would choose the first uh, piece of of, of meat. So, so the town so, employees should it. all hold back. So yeah, what I'm, saying, what, saying? what I'm saying is the elected the town officials. employees. No, the no, the town employees aren't holding back. We you just, didn't pick on just, just town employees, uh, the elected officials. No, like Bennett, you picked on my office, Bill's office, and the court. I did not. You know, you're picking I on the employees that are here on the court. Yes, you did. If they were to union, four, if they were to union, yeah. If yeah, for unions. He, he couldn't. He couldn't. No, I know. no, I I support the union. Shame on you! I've said it again. before. And they're I'm the ones who are getting their raises. Yeah, the unions are getting their raises. The rest and the and the, court, and the rest of us the be damned. are in a union, and they are getting the. They are no, no. Actually, you're cutting. You're cutting. That, you're that is hours. that is you're incorrect. You are wrong. The court clerks submitted these numbers and I put them in. Oh, how about the numbers we put in? Did you put them in? Yes, yeah, some of them I did. Oh, wonderful. Why'd you take some of them out? Because I think that they're, they're padded. I, I, I know, they're so padded. I've worked here for 38 years and I've padded every goddamn budget that I've ever submitted. I'm ben glad that you're telling the truth. ashamed of yourself. Okay. I know. I, I know. I, I'm I, so I, sorry, Bill. I, I, I am exactly. upset. To the max, I am upset. Yes, and, right and, and I have to tell you, as many years ago, and Michelle's up there. Michelle, can you you want to speak? No, 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 we're not going. No, I, would, I would love her to. No, I'm sorry. I do want to say one more thing. I have known Jackie decades. How many decades have I known you? At least I, three. I have never seen you upset. Like, how never, how you never. Seen I can't remember ever seeing you upset. We have done nothing but save money for this town. You, you have. have no idea what I've done for this town. How? Dare you? Dare you? All, all you know why? You're going to have to face me for the next year, and I'm going to look at you. I'm going to sit right here and look at you, and and you're going to be ashamed of yourself, Bennett. I am so sorry for you, Jackie. You're the one who told me stop putting a wrench in what we're doing. That's what you told me. No, I did not. Yes, you did. I did not. You told me. That. I actually almost thought you might be something good on this town board, but boy, was I mistaken. I am so freaking sorry you were elected. So I'm, I'm going to go home and do Zoom. Can I Let, ask who you consider to guests coming to dinner? Thank you. Thank you. Who's the guest coming to dinner? Yeah. The volunteers. I am a volunteer. The volunteers. Yeah, I think true. I think it's terrible that the volunteers don't receive budgets for their committees. And, and I, I don't understand why we wouldn't be giving the Housing Committee, the Human Rights Commission, the Complete Streets Committee, who we just wrote a huge policy for, they weren't even invited to present a budget. They can apply for that. They don't need it in their budget. They can apply for That's it. That's what they're going to Let me ask something. Do you think that we're going to- Listen, Maureen, you just want to say more of that. I know, I don't know how Reggie feels, but I know I would like to do the first resolution and, and, and move forward, approve the preliminary budget. We're still gonna tweak it. And I agree, Bennett, that we ought to put some money, some more money in with the volunteers, okay. probably not the amount they're asking, but I would like to see us approve the preliminary budget so we can move forward with the public hearing. And we will be working between now and then to figure out how to get some money to the volunteer groups. Okay. That's my opinion. I don't know, Reggie, how you feel. Yeah, I feel the same. So I'll offer resolution be resolved to adopt the preliminary 2022 budget. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. What do we have? No. What is the vote? Well, what is the vote? I'm going to abstain because I think we need to discuss this. So you're going to well, abstain and one no? We're going to have a public hearing. The public will come. Yeah, it's been every single no. We're going to abstain. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. You're welcome. Sorry, Michael, I didn't hear that. So do, do we have a public hearing? Nice work. Well, good job. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Michael. Daddy, I, love I know, I love you too, but this is ridiculous. No, I love you, but look, you know. How did he hurt? Should I take my money? You want to take my money so you can have one of the things? Marcia, I don't know. 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 Sure. Anybody else? How did you hear? Nobody's up. Can we, can we just take a deep breath? Because this is like really intense. Yeah, it's been the last two months have been right, pretty horrible. I mean, I'm like, 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 i Outside of this, I love Bennett. Uh, you know, uh, Bennett and I have great conversations outside of the town board. There's so much that I love about Bennett. And in the board, we don't agree. And it is what it is. But as a person, I love Bennett. Okay. Kumbaya. How is that for Kumbaya? Thank right? you. All right. I, we don't have any public to hear, so I'm going to move to adjourn. Wait, second. Wait, oh, no. We got one. One. Okay. And I would like to say something. Okay. Come on up. Two minutes. All right, so we got two. Two, yep. And then we're going to. Take it. I'm right over here. <laughs> okay. I'll, when there's 15 seconds, I'll give a little. And, and do you know okay. her name already? It's just Kirsten. I'm Kirsten. Yeah, Kirsten. Kirsten. Oh, Corey's oh. getting married. I don't want to get sick. So. Okay. Go. I'm, I'm here for the STR thing. Yes. I work for Heather Cross, who's got a problem yes. with y'all, but she didn't get her paperwork at yes. the time. And all I got to say is, is um, she's not one of those people that are causing the housing crisis. She bought a house over 10 years ago. It's been an STR. She's never had a complaint from neighbors. Uh, we've got a bear food cam, but she, you know, employs me and landscapers and pool people, and et cetera. And, and it's just, it's a functioning business, you know, and that's what it was purchased for. There's a lot of low life landlords that are keeping people out and of long-term residences and turning it into short-term rentals because they're looking at the big, you know, picture of money, you know, where people are losing their homes. And I know that, you know, but personally, I've had people begging for, you know, but um, where Heather's concerned, I don't think she's at all part of the problem. She made an investment and, and, and runs it as a business. And that was her thing from the get-go <laughs> over 10 years ago. So that's, I'm just here to say, you know, I mean, she didn't get her paperwork on time. It was during the pandemic. And uh, whatever, but uh, so whatever, I'm here to just say some people are doing the right thing. A lot of people, uh, some people in this town aren't, mm -hmm. but she's one of the people that wouldn't be affect, affecting, you know, anybody. She bought a high-end house and has a high-end rental and has uh, done successfully for over 10 years now. Thank you. Well, quick question. Can she put her paperwork for next year? I mean, we have a cap and everything, so it might not work out. She's up there. So maybe but, 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 next, but, next, but next year is going to, next year is two months away. Okay, I don't so know she put it in the paperwork for next year. I just, I just this year, I'll take care so of it. And I just know okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. This isn't a dialogue. This is public here. Okay, thank so you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Can you give this to her? Someone else. Anybody just help her leave that part, that whole about the resolution we just did. Thank you. 15 seconds. I just want to say, in relation to the, all the incredible work that's been doing on housing, I'm trying to identify long term affordable housing that a place to look is the owner occupied STRs that have accessible dwelling units on their property that they are renting that they converted or that they are renting a short term could be rented as long term. This is different from part time residents like Heather and myself who use our homes half the year. We, we can't make them available for long-term housing. 
but there are many people who have permits now who are owner occupied. They have a separate property on their, a separate house on their property. And those could be turned into long term affordable housing. I know that this, with the housing initiative that you approved today, there's the idea of, of building new ADUs, accessory dwelling units, which is great. But what about the ones that currently exist? Get those to be long term affordable housing. And that is a distinction and different from part time residents to rent their house out <clears throat> short term occasionally throughout the year. It's not the same thing. Thank you. Did we catch your name? Lisa Kolsch, K O L L I S C H. It would be my pleasure Thank you. to meet with you on one one on one. I forward to meet you with you on one on one and have a conversation. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, here comes Iris. Iris. Are you You're the last one. Okay. Um, I will turn to you all to get your together on uh, ethics law that it, it's not a big deal whether the town board approves or whether the supervisor that should not be a deal breaker just get this, it done this get done. these amendments have been in the town board hands for a year and a half and that is way too long so just get it together people mm -hmm. and just change the wording to town board if uh, if that's what you want it shouldn't be such a showstopper, you know, it, to me, it's like almost a minor thing that, so what if the town board approves instead of the supervisor? Just, you know, please get it done. And hopefully for November 22nd, which is I think the next meeting. Would you, would, you, would you have on Thursday, next, next thir a week a week and two days from now, would you have a public hearing for the, um, the well, when's the next town board? Well, it'll be it'll be yeah, that will, uh, that'll just be for the budget. So we won't yeah. do any right. it'll be the twenty so second. Twenty second. Twenty second. Twenty second. Okay, please have it ready mm -hmm. and all approved and all be nice. And just to be clear, we haven't had for a year and a half. There was a lot of back and forth between Laura and myself and, and the ethics group. And we and we worked it, but yeah, you're right. Time. Time. It's it's time. Time. I'm not saying it's not time. We haven't it hasn't been very close. <laughs> Very close. We got one phrase. Right yeah, yeah. I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.